join me for our opening prayer, which you can find on the inside of your bulletins. Let us pray together. Purify our conscience, Almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your Son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Christian season of Advent, we remember Christ's first coming, his first Advent as a baby over 2,000 years ago. We open our hearts to the coming of Christ this Christmas to us by his Spirit, and we look forward to Christ's promised physical return to earth, his second Advent. Today we relight the first three candles of the Advent wreath, the candles of hope, peace, and joy. Now we light the fourth candle of Advent. This is the candle of love. Jesus demonstrated self-giving love in his ministry as the Good Shepherd. Advent is a time for kindness, thinking of others, and sharing with others. It is a time to love as God loved us. In Deuteronomy 10, we find these words. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and who loves the strangers, providing them food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Let us pray. Teach us to love, O Lord. May we always remember to put you first as we follow Christ's footsteps, that we may know your love and show it in our lives. As we prepare for our celebration of Jesus' birth, also fill our hearts with love for the world, that all may know our all may know your love and the one whom you have sent, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. A, a warm welcome. We have many guests who are here. We have a number of, a lot of family who are joining us to see these little ones. So we're glad that you could be with us today. And just to be clear, uh, that was not Brad Smith up here with Diane. That was that's Henry, and it's wonderful to have Henry back. Henry went into the joined the Navy this summer and just completed his first leg of. I'm not supposed to say it. I could get, this is all classified information, but it's like nuclear engineering. Is that nuclear? Um, sort of. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm not supposed to know. But so good to have you here today, Henry. Uh, on the announcements on the back, a few things to mention. First is we're going to have a wonderful pageant here coming up in a little bit. After the uh, service is over, we have beautifully decorated the downstairs. There are tons of cookies, and the actors will be available for autographs. So you can go downstairs, you can get your autographs. They would love it, all right? So ho hopefully you can spend a few minutes with us downstairs afterwards. Uh, this, this afternoon at 4 o'clock, uh, this is something we've been doing for a few years now. We are going around caroling uh, some of our neighbors here in, at Lake Somerset. They've contacted the church and said, hey, we'd love to have you guys stop by. So if you'd like to come caroling with us, we meet here at 4 o'clock. 
and then we basically hop in our vehicles and caravan around the lake and it usually takes about an hour hour 15 or so to go to all the houses and but it's just a lot of fun singing and everyone that we go to they're just so thankful that we would take the time to come and carol them so i encourage you to join us at four o'clock uh, no voice lessons needed because I'm living proof of that. So you, we, we just sing loud and, and proud. Sorry. Uh, so today is the last service before the Christmas Eve service. That is next Saturday. Christmas Eve service is our biggest service of the year. And because of that, we have split it into two. So we have a service at four and a service at seven. These are the same service, just at different times. So I encourage you, if you'd like to come, we'd love to have you for one of those services, uh, 4 and 7 this Saturday. And we will have church next Sunday. There are churches who are closing shop on Christmas morning. We'll pray for them, okay? So, <laughs> but we will not be. We will be here. Uh, we're going to be singing a lot of songs. Well, I'll give a very shortened message, and we're going to have communion together next Sunday, Christmas morning, 1030. Same time. Nothing changed there. Uh, Brett. Uh, Terry wanted me to. Terry Taylor wanted me to mention that this Tuesday, the men's group. We're not having our normal men's group downstairs. We are meeting over in Jonesville at Spangler's for breakfast at eight thirty, and this is open for all men. So if you hadn't been, let's see, like, well, it's only for the people who have been going. No, anyone can join us. We'd love to have you at eight thirty uh, over at Spangler's. Women are not invited. We don't want you guys. So, <laughs> but uh, Karen, I'm looking for Karen. Oh, there you are. You're up here. Are the women done, or are they, they? No, we will be at. We have a, a lesson. We will go over, and then we're having a brunch. So, oh. if you'd like to come to lesson in the brunch, we're just doing the food. They're doing the lesson, so that that tells you a little something. We're doing Proverbs 31 more. There you uh, go. All right. So that's happening uh, Tuesday morning here at 10 o'clock. The women's. Any other announcements I should mention? All right. Well, please join me in your in the Pew Bibles in front of you. We're going to look at Psalm 62, page 898. We have been systematically going through each of these psalms that have responsive reading since last, well, I guess two years ago, fall. Let me give you a little introduction to Psalm 62 as you turn there, page 898. Psalm 62 God's people sing this psalm to foster confidence in his care, especially as they are faced with people who use power and wealth to oppress them. The strong temptation in such a case is either to despair or else to seek security in our own power and wealth rather than in God. Now, the simplest way to follow the flow of thought in this psalm is to observe the shifts in who the psalmist is speaking to. In the first two verses it, we have the description of my soul. He's speaking to his soul and to God. And then in verse 3 and 4, he's speaking directly to and about his attackers. And then verse 5 and 7, he's back to speaking to his soul and to God. And then 8 and 10, he's exhorting the whole congregation, the whole worshiping community. And finally, the last two verses, 11 and 12, are descriptions of God's trustworthiness. So I will read the odd-numbered verses, if you'll please respond with the even-numbered verses. Psalm 62. <clears throat> my soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from Him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will never be shaken. How long will you assault a man? Would all of you throw him down? This leaning wall, this tottering fence? The cold intend to topple him from his lofty place. They take the light from eyes. Find rest, O my soul, in God alone. My hope comes from Him. My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Low-born men are but a breath. The high-born are but a lie. If weighed on a balance, they are nothing. Together they are only a breath. Increase, 
one thing God has spoken. Two things have I heard, that you, O God, are strong. I encourage you, if you're able, to please stand for our next three songs. You'll be able to follow them up here on the wall.
Join me in prayer. Father, how true are the words of the psalmist here in Psalm 62 where it says, My soul finds rest in God alone. How often, Father, do we try to find our rest in other things, be it our families, work, money, uh, status. We, find, we try to fill that rest, but it will not be filled. We find rest in you alone. You are our salvation. You alone are our rock, our fortress. We will never be shaken. So no matter what happens to us, Father, whatever difficulties and hardships we face, be it from sinful men and women who seek our harm, be it just the natural parts of life such as disease and illness and, and natural uh, uh, disasters, Father, we know that you will never leave us nor forsake us. So, Father, we pray that we would find our rest in you alone. We're thankful that our hope comes from you. We're so thankful that our salvation and our status, our identity, are to be found in you alone, as the psalmist says in verse 7. And so help us to trust in you. Trust in you at all times, no matter what is going on. And we pour, our, pour out our hearts before you. We're thankful. It doesn't matter if you're low-born or high-born, Father. We are all equal when it comes to the cross. We confess that we all have sinned, and we are all in need of your salvation. From the goody two-shoes and righteous among us, to those who have sinned greatly against their fellow man. Father, we all need your salvation. Father, we thank you that you are loving and that you are strong. So we trust in your power, we trust in your wisdom, and we trust in your love this morning. We give you thanks, and we give you the praise. In Jesus' holy name, amen. This is typically the part where we have a children's message, but all the children are pretty much downstairs. So we are going to move from uh, prayer, from the psalm prayer, to intercessory prayer. And on the back of your bulletins, we have a few prayer requests already mentioned there. And uh, Ann Baker asked for prayer for the Rakowski and White families. There was a sudden tragedy. These are uh, relatives of Ann's relatives. And so we pray for them this morning. How else can we be in prayer? Do you have any prayer requests for yourself or for a loved one or even perhaps a praise or a word of thanksgiving? Love to hear it today. Megan, and then we'll go to the student. Um, my parents are traveling from Colorado to Michigan this week, and then my grandparents are going back to Florida this week, so they travel for everything. Sounds like you've been doing too much caroling, Megan. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Sue? Yeah. Um, praise. I'm very thankful that my daughter, after living at home for a year, has found a job. Good. And she's starting on the 22nd, and also just pray that it goes well, and she's Good. I'm glad to hear that Taylor has found a job starting on the 22nd, just right before Christmas, right when you would want to start a job, right? So, uh, very good. Um, Alex didn't praise his hand. I'm going to pray for Alex. He, tw he tweaked his back, and he's in quite a bit of pain. So, and many of you know what that back pain is like. So, we're going to pray for Alex this morning too. Any other prayer requests this morning, Luann? Um, yeah, we lost a, a gentleman from the community, um, Jim Jakeway. Okay. Um, it was unexpected, and we had a lot of close friends. Jim Jakeway, mm -hmm. prayers for his family with his passing. Mm -hmm. Sorry to hear that. Karen? Um, i sorry to hear all the prayers, but can we pray for Jewel as well? Yes. She is sick. Um, it sounds like it's COVID. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Well, we're supposed to.
Carol at her house. We may be caroling from a way back, so we'll see. All right. Susan? Just to praise, um, yes. Abby was able to graduate oh, yes. She did meet the requirements, and they let her go through, so that's good. From Michigan State? Yes, Michigan State. And she graduated three and a half years. She didn't want to go. Three and a half years. Yeah, that's pretty, yeah. That's pretty so good. We're proud of her. And we're proud of Olivia. She was able to uh, take her state boards for veterinary medicine. Yep. And national boards, sorry, national boards, I think. Um, but she won't find out her results for yep. another month. We did pray about that. That was like a nine hour exam. Yeah, that didn't sound like fun at all. So. <laughs> Great. Eight and a half. Hey, well, there you go. Just like your sister. There you go. There you go. Nice. Nice, Olivia. Nice. Any other prayer requests today? Emily. Yep. 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 And if it's not COVID, it's influenza or it's it's something else right yeah, now. So yeah. 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 Any other prayer requests? Well, let's join together in prayer this morning. Our Father, it's good to come before you. It's good. To, we know we can present these requests, and, and I'm sure many of these requests have already pre be, been presented. But Father, it's good for us as a church family to pray for each other and to... Uh, pray with each other, and we do that uh, this morning. Father, we start by praying for one of the missions that we support, which many of us uh, see this time of year, especially with the bell ringing. We pray for the Salvation Army, especially the chapter in Hillsdale, um, as they seek to serve um, all the people in Hillsdale County, especially those who are in need. Um, and we know this is a very important time for them for fundraising. We pray that this will be a good season and that they would have all the resources they need to Start 2023 on a very good foot. Father, I'm thankful for our deacons. I pray for, for them, Terry, Bernie, Luann, Alex, and Linda. I'm thankful for their partnership in the gospel ministry here. We pray that you will watch over them, give them um, your wisdom, especially as we care for and think about leading this church. Father, we lift up to those who are grieving this morning. We think of the Rakowski and White families as long as the Jekaway family. With their, with, it sounds like both these were sudden passings. So we pray for your peace and comfort that only can come through your spirit and your word. May they experience that, especially here in this uh, Christmas season. We pray for Megan's parents and grandparents who will be traveling. Pray that you keep them safe, uh, especially if her parents are coming during the holiday season, which can be a lot more, a lot, lot more traffic than usual. We're thankful to hear from Sue that Taylor has found a job. We pray that this would be a great fit for her, that she would really thrive in it, um, and that she would uh, continue to grow and serve in this in this way. Father, pray for Alex and pray for his back. We pray that you would have your healing hand on him, and that he would uh, be feeling a lot better come tomorrow morning or even sooner. Um, I know it's been an issue in the past, and so we pray that it won't be a long-term issue, but just a Hopefully just a today issue. We're thankful to hear about Abby and Olivia. We're thankful for Abby's graduation and that Olivia's finished her uh, exams, which I'm sure went very well. And we pray for them as they continue their journey uh, in their respective paths and professions. And we're thankful that uh, Olivia could be with us this morning. Father, we think of those who are ill, who are sick. I know COVID is really in the flu and pneumonia. It all this is tis the season right now. So we think of our facilities. I know Emily mentioned specifically the Lenaway County Medical Facility down there in Adrian. Um, I also can think of uh, Hillsdale Hospital, and uh, we think of those who are staying in different places like uh, Summit and the Brooklyn Living Center and Drew's Place. We have uh, folks in our church there. We pray you, your hand of protection would be on them. Um, and we pray for Jewel, too, as, as she is struggling with sickness, and that this would be a short-term, um, would not be a severe case, whatever it is that she has. And Father, at this time, we bring to you any other prayer request from uh, the silence, the quiet of our hearts, we bring them before you. Uh, many words of praise or thanksgiving you've laid on us. So hear now the prayers of your people. Father, in all these things, we pray that you would work your will, 
that you would ultimately be glorified. We look forward to now having the kids come up and we pray that you would give them confidence that they would do a, a great job and uh, we're thankful for all the hard work that went, be, went on behind the scenes, especially under the leadership of uh, Amanda and Susan. So we give you thanks this morning and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, before we get to that, we're going to have an offering. And so I'd like to ask my ushers to come forward to receive that offering this morning. church here in Somerset to wisely use it that we might glorify your wonderful and gracious name and share the great news of Jesus Christ, which is what Christmas is all about. And Father, we pray as he taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our sermon series in Advent has been called The Characters of Christ. And so it's nice that we're actually going to have a, a play that will talk about those characters in a very interesting way. And so as they're getting everything set up here, um, I do want to say that the kids have been meeting every uh, Sunday, 9 o'clock since Thanksgiving to, not 9 at night, 9 in the morning on Sundays. And they've been very busy. We had a dress rehearsal Friday night, and so I'm excited to see um, how it's going to go. But I present to you the Wild Wild West Christmas. <coughs>
Standing there. That's a good girl. Good horse. Nice day to go. I'll just turn you out here to graze in the church playground. Woo! What a ride. That day's about sure frisky. Things look mighty nice here. It's good to be in Somerset. Hey, Dear diary, welcome. I finally made it to Somerset. Mighty nice place. I sure was tickled to get this year invitation from the preacher. Well, look at this year thing. It was postmarked on August 30th and delivered on December 12th. <laughs> preacher said the church was prick was fixed to have a Christmas program and that me, the Wild Bill Hiccup, and Claire the Calamity Kid was all invited. Yahoo, it's weren't easy getting here. Had a wrestle pole cat in Addison and got jumped by a varmint in Pittsburgh. <laughs> but we're here now. Or should I say I'm here now? I'd be dead gum if I know where Wild Bill and Claire are. Well, dear diary, sign it off for now. I'm going to snuggle up with this here blanket and wait for the fun to begin. I'm also going to watch for Wild Bill and Claire.
neck. That was powerful. Yeah, yeah. You kids are good singers. Me too. Oh, give me a nest where the buffalo spread. Ooh. Whoa, Wild Bill. Your singing is getting better and better. How are you going over practice now? Thanks, Claire. I still don't get this baby stuff, though. Kids were singing about it, too. Oh, shh. Sunday coming. Maybe you'll get an answer soon.
Augustus says that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first and this taxing was first made when Cyrenius, the governor of Syria, and all went out to be taxed. Everyone who into his own city, and Joseph also went up from Galilee out to the city of Nazareth, into Judah, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because it, he was of the, day, the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with the child. And so it went, so it was that when, while they were there, the days were accomplished that all should be delivered and she brought forth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding their field, keeping watch over the flock by night. And lo, the angel said to the Lord, Come upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid, and the angel said unto them, Fear not. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in manger. And suddenly, with the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, I'm beginning to get the big picture, or should I say, the little picture. Jesus started out as a baby so he could feel what I feel when I'm sad, angry, or tempted. My God, when God does it, he does it right. What a good plan. Thank you for inviting us to your Christmas pageant. This year's pageant was the best I've ever done, seen, or heard. Me too. <laughs> Will everyone join us in closing by singing Joy to the World together? We will sing the first verse. Will you join us in a second? Give them a loud, a big round of applause. Give them a great job. And so I encourage you, they're obviously already downstairs, you know, cookies before applause. That's how it works. <laughs> so please go downstairs afterwards and let them know what, what a great job they did. And please let uh, Amanda and Susan yes. as well, they put in a lot of work. And Eliana as well. I mean, how many of you would get up here and sing a solo? Like, that was incredible. That was great. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
Well, again, we invite you to join us uh, for caroling at 4 today, uh, this and Saturday for our Christmas Eve service at 4 and 7. Um, on your way out, we do have poinsettia forms. Today is the last day to buy a poinsettia in memory or in honor of someone. You don't need to have the cash on you, but uh, if you are going to get a, a poinsettia, please fill it out and give it to me after the service. And they're on the table as you exit. But we got one more hymn to do. So if you'll join me, our final hymn this morning is Go Tell It on the Mountain, 138 in your hymnals. 138. Go tell it on the mountain, and if you are able to, please stand as we sing together.